Hello everyone! Uh, today we will talk about one of the most difficult problems in uh, software design. It is internationalization of web applications. So what is internationalization? It's, it's hard to pronounce and that's why uh, in written language uh, there is abbreviation in, uh, for that word I18N but that doesn't help anyhow uh, to pronounce it still so I will use internationalization. So it's design and development of your content, application, specification and so on in a way uh, that it will ensure that your software will work nicely and can be easily adopted for users from different cultures, regions and languages. Many people uh, confuse uh, localization, internationalization and globalization, so let's define them. We will talk today about internationalization and that's the process of uh, adopting your software in order to be eas easily, uh, easily used by translators and the translating process is called localization. When internalization is done properly, localization goes easily and smoothly. And if internalization is not done properly, if developers were not thinking about internationalization from the very beginning of uh, development process, it could be very, very painful to localize your application. And the globalization is uh, the combination of internationalization and localization processes. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, and uh, let's define the difference between language and locals. There are countries uh, where multiple languages are official and multiple languages are spoken, for example, Switzerland, Finland, Canada and so on. And there are uh, languages which are spoken uh, in different countries, for example, Spanish or Arabic or English. So the combination of language and uh, region is a local. And uh, in most cases we will operate with uh, locals. All right, let's, uh, let's imagine that I started uh, a couple of years ago, I started the social network and uh, you know, it was popular uh, a couple of years ago to make social networks for everything. Uh, me personally, I was doing a couple of social networks. So let's imagine that I started a uh, social network and of course, because I'm kind of experienced web developer, I know that there will be users with uh, random weird characters with the different uh, <coughs> characters in their names and they will write in different languages. So I decided from the very beginning to use Unicode and only Unicode for my application everywhere in database in backend in frontend so rule number one Unicode everywhere then <clears throat> I finally published my network uh, my social network and then I'm getting the call from my Russian translator oh hello Russia aha you have longer strings than English all right I will adjust my website. So I adjusted my <clears throat> my uh, user interface to be flexible and to support uh, any length of translated uh, strings because in some cases it can be extremely uh, different in length between English and uh, other language. So the length of one word in English could be multiplied by four or five in some languages. So uh, keep that in mind. Then I'm getting for this uh, simple string. Uh, it's really simple. So uh, I have the, the here only one placeholder and I was thinking that this would be just fine. But then I'm <clears throat> getting a, a call from my... Oh, this is my Slovak translation. Hello. Aha! Uh -huh. In your languages, words uh, are depending on gender. Okay, I'll fix that. Thank you. 
So, uh, now I need to... It's, it's not technically difficult to adjust strings based on some variables, but <clears throat> now I need to ask my users about their gender. So I need to make that field, the gender field, uh, necessary. So uh, they will need to fill it. And nobody likes uh, complex forms, so I will probably lose some users. But that's the only way. Facebook have the same problem. And yeah, we just need to ask our users about their gender in order to not offend anyone. <clears throat> All right, I did that. I uh, put that to production. And then I'm getting a call from... Oh, Russia again. Hello. What? You are using different plurals for two, three, and four, and then you're using singular? Sorry, using singular for 21? All right, that's weird. Oh, but I fi I'll fix that, thank you. Oh, another call, it's from friends. Hello, friends. Oh, you cannot say uh, that content have zero likes, but it should have zero like. So I should use singular for zero. All right, that's, that's easy. I'll do that, thank you. Oh, another call from, <clears throat> uh, from um, Czech. All right, hello. You are using a different kind of plural for um, uh, numbers more than 20 and only so. All right, all right, I'll fix that. And after a couple of those calls, I decided not to do that by myself, but to use open source library, <coughs> which is format.js, or there are other libraries, use whatever you want to use. But yeah, whenever it's possible, please use open source library, because you cannot handle all those weird edge cases by yourself. All right, I handled numbers and uh, then, then <clears throat> I'm getting the call from my Arabic translator. Hello. Well, yes, I'm doing, I'm doing that ellipsis thing. So when phrase is longer than uh, the container, I'm putting those three dots. So I'm cutting a string and putting three dots. Huh? I cannot do that for Arabic language because you, in your language, um, words are going in nice and smooth flow. All right, all right, I'll fix that, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> I fixed that. I stopped using substring magic uh, in database, backend and frontend, and I started to use CSS overflow, uh, text overflow ellipses. So, use the platform. Platform handled this just, just perfect. And then, oh, another call from my Arabic translator. Yes, yes. Uh, no. Right to left. So you writing from right to left. Uh, well, we do not support that yet. But we will ship it soon. And then uh, we adjusted our website for right to late, uh, left languages as Arabic, Hebrew and so on. And during that process we uh, completely get, got rid of um, all text align left right or flawed left right, those CSS properties, because there is no left in, and right in uh, good applications. There is start and end, so <clears throat> we were using a lot of flexbox uh, properties instead of aligning uh, things by left or right. So, yes, uh, <clears throat> and actually we should, uh, it's, it's, it's bad that front-end uh, development doesn't support right-to-left languages properly nowadays. So this is how uh, interface, how right to left interface looks like, but with the English strings. Can you use it? Well, it's, it's 
kind of weird, a little bit weird, but yeah, I can use this for one or two days. Uh, and this is exactly how right to left speaking, Arabic speaking people feel like, because uh, nowadays a very small amount of user interface are adopted for their language. So they are reading left to right interfaces for right to left languages, and that's very uncomfortable. And there are a lot of Arabic speaking people, as far as I know, it's a third or fourth most spoken language in the world. And I have no idea why we are not paying uh, enough attention to support them. So, the next uh, thing is uh, probably backend developers, they are they're thinking that, oh, this is front-end stuff and we should not care about internationalization at all and that's completely not true because uh, as you probably know there are differences in date formatting time formatting and numbers formatting and the part of localization is actually not just translating th strings but defining those formats as well for example <clears throat> It's different for German in Germany and German in Australia, in Austria, sorry, uh, how to format uh, prices. So for the same language, there are different in numbers formatting. It depends on local, not language. And uh, rule number one for uh, uh, database uh, administration administrators is to store uh, dates in uh, timestamp format and then uh, give that timestamp in UTC time zone to frontend and frontend will handle everything else formatting and uh, time zones magic and everything else the same with the prices so store prices in uh, integer format and then uh, provide that those integer numbers to frontend and frontend will handle formatting properly another uh, oh, I got another call from Serbia. Hello, Serbia. Yes, I'm using names in my strings, of course, because uh, there are usernames. What? I should change names depending on the context? All right, that's difficult, but thank you for the information. We will handle this. <clears throat> and... Um, Personally, I don't know how to handle it, but uh, but uh, hopefully there will be some solution in future. But yes, this is true. Right now we are not properly supporting uh, languages where names are changing, depends on context, because there are so many different edge cases. And after all those calls from my translators, I got kind of discouraged and uh, I was thinking about just going with the way that a lot of developers are going. So just provide English version of, our, of the software. But <clears throat> that's actually a very extremely bad decision. And here is why. Uh, this is the main reason why go international. If you provide just English version, you are targeting something around one quarter of uh, internet audience. So, in theory, you will lose 75% of your users. Think about it. 75%. That's a lot. So, for example, uh, Russia is the big country and if we will provide English interface for Russian audience, we will get something around 2 or 3% of Russian population because a very small amount of people in Russia speaks English and that's that's a lot of people and that's a lot of money so yes uh, basically this is the graph and uh, this graph is showing that Facebook is getting uh, something around uh, additional 50% of money from uh, the rest of the world outside US and Europe so, either you are communist and you want to target more people, or you are capitalist and your target is more money, you should go international. And uh, yeah, here is another issue on backend side. 
because a lot of searches, this is the example from Bodyin.com website, and we are not providing any search results for one character uh, search queries, because, well, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense for English language, but if we would be an international website, and uh, if we support, for example, Chinese, we can describe some things, for example, we can say dog in Chinese in, by using one character. And one character search query should be uh, completely valid in uh, properly internationalized applications. So, uh, do not, uh, backend developers, do not make any assumptions on search queries and maybe some other queries length. One character is just enough. Just perform the action needed. Another backend issue is sorting. So, uh, this is again example from Vadin.com and uh, employees on our website are sorted alphabetically by name. And uh, Omer Tumer is the last person in that list because in Finnish language O uh, actually, ö uh, is uh, at the end of alphabet, but it's not the case uh, for English uh, or Turkish, because Omar, Omar is from Turkey and ö uh, is going right after o, so he should be somewhere in the middle of the list, but since we are mistakenly using Finnish uh, sorting, uh, uh, algorithm, he is in the end, and that's that's not true, and that will be fixed very soon. So keep in mind that uh, search should respect uh, the user's local. Uh, it's it's uh, very easy to handle uh, Latin symbols, but you can imagine what is happening for non-Latin Chinese uh, Cyrillic letters and so on. So a lot of fun is here. So, to make a conclusion, uh, it's very important to start thinking about internationalization of web applications from the very first day of development. If you design your application to be language, region and culture independent from the very start of project, the localization will be easy and enjoyable process. Um, yeah, and uh, for, the, for the end of our presentation, I will demonstrate you just a small example uh, about how context matters in uh, localization. Because it is very important to provide a properly localized application. So if you will just translate that, let's say, with a Google Translate, then or uh, do not pay a lot of attention to a localization process, then your users will not be quite happy. They will not feel that this was designed for them. They should feel that. Uh, instead, they will feel that this was designed for English-speaking people and adopted with uh, some small changes for them. And that will not make them happy. So, for example, this is the case for Google Maps a couple of years ago. And uh, there was a link, get directions, in the map. And for Swedish language it was translated a bit incorrectly. So, it was translated as instructions. And of course, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they actually they were struggling to figure out what's the reason of a very small number of users from Sweden. And of course, it's because of incorrect translations. So, technically, for Google Translate, it's correct to, uh, to uh, translate directions as instructions. But really, nobody will click instructions link on the map to get directions. So, it's very important to provide the right context, uh, maybe uh, the image of the context for your uh, for the translators. Alright, that's all for now. I hope uh, I provide some, inf imp uh, some useful information for you and have a good day. Bye-bye.